Jan Hicks here of Jan Hicks Creates. We're just going to sit here and look at my pretty orchid for a few seconds while I get my Zen back. It's pretty, isn't it? It's my very first, well, actually not my very first orchid. There's a story there. I'll tell you that in my next stitch with me. It's a, it's a long story. I need a few moments of Zen because setting up for this video. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do my yoga yet today either. <sighs> Pretty though, right? First of many orchids. How are you guys doing today? It is Tuesday. It is. January 22nd at 1123 a.m. It is 79 degrees here in Mililani on the island of Oahu. Sorry, not sorry <laughs> for all those who just suffered that awful snowstorm and are now in the midst of freezing temperatures. Yeah, not fun. And no, I don't miss it, so just stop <laughs> asking me if I miss it. Because I really don't. So Jan Hicks, Jan Hicks Creates, welcome. Had my one year anniversary last Wednesday. Um, thank you so much for all of your kind comments. For those of you that are new, um, I do a lot of cross stitch, a little bit of knitting. Um, I'll be showing you all kinds of different projects today. For those of you that are returned, thank you for coming back. Again, your comments. All right, it is worth it, always. It is so, I won't say I started this on a lark. I explained why I started Floss Tube last week, um, I explained. So it wasn't a lark, but I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't realize. Um, those of you that have learned from me, those of you that decided to try stitching in hand because of what I've shown you. Those of you that have tried knitting because of what I've shown you. I am just so proud of you all. I am thrilled that I could have some kind of impact on your life. And of course, the many people that I've enabled. <laughs> Go team! <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. When I was at the um, cross stitch store here a couple weeks ago getting the goodies for the giveaway, she had a sampler displayed that was a Hawaii themed sampler by Jeanette Douglas and it was um, the I guess the the piece for a cruise that they organized sponsored whatever that Jeanette Douglas was the was the teacher designer for the cruise and so that sampler had only been available for the cruise. It, it's not available to the general public yet. It's beautiful. It's Jeanette Douglas. Of course it's beautiful, right? Specialty stitches, silks. Jeanette Douglas started following me on Instagram last week. And of course that sent a little thrill up my spine, right? So I thought, you know, the worst she can do is say no. So I messaged her on Instagram and I said, you know, I saw this beautiful piece that you did for the, the store here in, um, in, Ho in Honolulu. Is there any way that that would be available for me to purchase? She wrote back, sure enough, I'm gonna be getting that. And I let her know, I said, you know, I'm gonna be showing this on my floss tube and I would bet money that there's going to be other people out there that want this. How can I tell them to get it to you? So once I get it, we haven't finalized the transaction. Once I get it, I will let you know all that good stuff. But it just amazes me the connections that can be made here when you reach out. And that's what I see here every single week. The comments not only let me know that I am enriching you in some way. There are so many of you that I look forward to your comments each week just because you make me smile. You are kind and friendly and bubbly and happy 
in the midst of life's storms, you still find your joy. And I appreciate that every single week. So keep, keep on keeping on. Stick with me. I appreciate you. I also wanted to say that if there's ever a time, you know, I try very hard to answer all the comments. It might be a few days that have gone by. If you ever comment and don't receive a comment from me, please know that it, or a response from me, please know that, that it wasn't intentional. I really do, you know, the only way that we can create this community and create these connections is through the give and take that comes with the comments. And I've had many instances where there has been that kind of give and take. And that's what I love. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I keep coming back. So if I ever don't respond to a comment, please don't think, oh, pff, she doesn't, she doesn't. Especially if you're new, right? You don't have any experience with how I relate to, to my viewers. All right, he had to move the orchid out of the way because he was not taking no for an answer. Oh, see, there he is, Sasha. <laughs> Just passing through to get over to the window. So anyways, I will always respond to your comments. Some comments I only give, give a love if it's just like a thank you or something. Um, but I will always respond to your comments. And that's also why I invite you to join me on my Facebook page, Jan Hicks Creates. You know, I created that page because when I was selling um, jewelry, creating, designing and selling jewelry. But I'm not doing that anymore. So right now it's just sitting out there doing nothing. So I thought it's a great, you know, one of the things that is lacking I guess on YouTube in the comments is I wouldn't say everybody but almost every person when I do a stitch with me that responds and they'll say oh I stitched right right along with you and I was working on this I would love to be able to see that I would love to see what you're working on and respond just like we were sitting here together stitching right that's something that on um, my Facebook page we could do and I would love to see your projects I'm not selling anything there there's it's not like there's a fee for it or anything it's just sitting out there so we may as well use it so again and if you have sent me a friend request on Facebook um, I'm probably not going to accept those I'd rather you come and just like my and join whatever it is my Facebook page Jan Hicks creates just because I keep that more in that is pretty much where I post everything cross stitch and knitting related I don't talk about that very much on my main Facebook page I post my finishes on my main Facebook page but for the most part um, my face my main Facebook is friends personal that kind of stuff not that you aren't my friends <laughs> but I hope you know what I mean anyway um, as you can see we're starting to get stuff up on the walls moving along nicely um, this is some artwork that we had um, purchased. A guy that I had gone to high school with started posting his wife's artwork on Facebook. She is an artist and um, has is in a gallery or maybe several galleries up in um, in the Pittsburgh area, the greater Pittsburgh area. And I just Mike and I really like abstract art, and I just fell in love with that one. So that was the first piece of hers that we purchased. We we've, we've got several other pieces since then and then this morning I started putting up um, some of my pictures these are my pictures that um, I've had printed on canvases so the top two rows are our New England trip and this empty space here there's a picture of a lighthouse that goes there the lighthouse off of Campobello Island um, up north of New England that's the only picture you can see it sitting here actually um, that's the only picture that didn't have a sawtooth hanger on the back so I have to get that but so the first two rows are New England Lake Placid uh, these are off of um, Mount Desert Island Bar Harbor Bass Harbor um, lighthouse on Mount Desert Island this, these Adirondack chairs I don't know whether you can see that are on Mount Desert Island this is up in the White Mountains in North in um, New Hampshire. This row is our Southwest trip. This is a uh, door in Tucson. This is the Antelope Slot Canyon. 
we did a hot air balloon ride in Santa Fe and that's that and this is a picture over um, this is sunset over Lake Powell I believe and then these pictures are Charleston South Carolina I believe there will be much, many more pictures added to this wall over time. I need to get more pictures from our other trips printed out and hung up. There's lots of wall space here. We got our big, our big pieces up yesterday, and now we'll just be filling in with everything else. So, where are we in my notes? Oh, I had a couple questions that I wanted to address. Um, but I'm not going to address them in this video because they're more technique questions. I had mentioned that the the um, the knot garden, the Liz Turner Deal knot garden, needs blending filament. So it called for several different colors of blending filament, and I decided not to use those. Somebody asked what blending filament is, so I'm going to do a video showing I think the different types of metallic threads at least the ones that I have that I can easily get my hands on I think I'll do a video showing those and how they work how they stitch a lot of us have problems with metallic I am no different so I'll show you how they're used and um, kind of what they look like stitched up and whether it's worth the hassle or not um, Somebody else asked about, as you know, I change counts of fabric of the, rather than using the called for fabric and the called for counts, I'm always changing that up. Somebody asked what difference that makes in a piece. So I thought I would do a video, a, a separate video again, showing what the different counts do and why one would choose one over the other, what two strands look like, what one strand looks like. Um, I know there's a lot, a lot of new stitchers out there and I hope that will be useful. I am not including it in this video, number one, because I don't want this to get too long, but also I think it'd be better if I have those as shorter standalone videos so people can go right to those subjects if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, so What have you been working on, Jan? All kinds of goodies. I did download the Tiny Decisions app to help me decide what to work on. And then I promptly just worked on Luz Gonzalez for a few days because <laughs> that's such a stunning piece. So she is in the stack, but I did get some other things. I, I got stitches in on all of my new um, big projects, so I'll be showing you those. Um, and yeah, there's just a whole stack of stuff here. So let's get started. First up, the Jacobean tree. And you can see I now have going to Elin Roethlisberger next. So this is already claimed. It is only the chart. This was passed to me from Lisa Richter, so I'm passing it on when I'm finished with it. And Elin is going to be passing me another Jacobean design, a booklet that she has that had been in her mother-in-law's stash, I believe. And that's the Jacobean, I did it, Jacobean bell pull that I think um, Gerald and uh, Leticia are also working on. But anyways, because I only, I didn't have a kit, I had to replace the fabric and the fibers in this. It calls for Finca Floss Presencia. I did um, substitute DMC, so the colors, what I've gotten done is right down here. The colors don't necessarily match what are in the picture, but that's okay. And this is my start on that. So just a little bit of one of those first little hillocks and a little bush because I love seeing how the different colors play out and how they were going to look on this fabric. I think this is going to be just a gorgeous piece on this raw linen. This is 35 count. I am doing one thread over, over two on this. The coverage is perfect. The stitching is wonderful. So what this is is 
this down here and you can see this is a much darker rust color in the Finca floss than what the DMC is, the equivalent is. But that's okay. It's going to be gorgeous on this linen. I highly recommend if you guys want to change out, don't hesitate to make it your own. You know, it doesn't have to be like everybody else is out there. Mine certainly never are. So next up is um, the Tree of Dreams, the kit that I got. Now somebody did mention, somebody did mention that um, it is possible that some of these designs are from artwork that is um, out of copyright, which is a possibility. It has no markings though of who the artist might be at all. So I don't know. Now for this, if you'll remember, it did come, the floss came on these cards. I actually took the time and put all the floss into my thread tux bags because these are just so much easier to work with. Now there are a couple colors, what I just showed you, there are a couple colors that have a lot of extra floss. I didn't I didn't put all of this in the bags because since I am stitching over one on 28 count, I know I won't need all of that floss. Sorry, it's flipping around. So this is what I have so far. Just the very bottom little bit. Again, one strand of floss over one thread on 28 count even weave. That's just a couple nights work. That was fun. Haven't gotten back to it in a while, but that's okay. Next stop is the Liz Turner deal. 16th century English family garden. I started up here. And that's what I have so far. You know, one of the things I spent a lot of time trying to do with my setup today was to get the lighting right. I'm not liking my lighting at all today. And I'm still not. It took me about a half hour of fussing here, and I'm still not happy. So that top stitch, do you see that? It's supposed to be a laced herringbone. This top stitch meaning this, this band in here. It's supposed to be a laced herringbone. And what that is, is you do one pass doing this and then you do a second pass doing this. So you can see the one here and you can see the two here. And then there's a three here and a four here. This really frustrated me. Obviously, I mean, there's, there's no indication of what you're supposed to do in steps three and four. This is just the finish, the completion of steps one and two. So either she didn't finish creating the stitch diagram or the source that she got the stitch diagram information from was incomplete. I looked online in various places and what you're supposed to do once you get this base, <laughs> dear Sasha, it's wild time. Once you get this base, these base stitches done, trying to get this more focused, you're supposed to use a contrasting thread and kind of weave. You're, you're not actually piercing the fabric at all. You're weaving back and forth through 
the stitches and so it creates this kind of lacy woven look through the herringbone. Mary Talbot, um, no Mary Corbett on Needles and Threads has a great tutorial on this. The problem is the first pass, this first pass here, you're actually supposed to be going under like one, two, three, four. You're supposed to go underneath. I don't know whether it's this one or this one that you're supposed to go underneath so that whenever you're doing the weaving, it, it catches. If you don't go underneath, your, your thread that you're weaving with slips through. You can't do it. There's no indication on this of going underneath any of the threads. I had done across the whole row and found, then that's when I found the tutorial. So I did across the second pass, this part, to finish it, and I tried the weaving then that, that Mary Corbett had given the tutorial for, and it just didn't work. So I decided the heck with it. I think it's really pretty the way it is. It has great texture. I'm just not gonna fuss with it. So I started the first knot, square garden. Again, buttonhole stitches, satin stitches, all kinds of great specialty stitches throughout this. Every single one of these gardens has specialty stitches in them. This is a, a really fun piece to do. So that was a couple days work there I think. So that is going to be a beauty. I'm just going to move forward knowing that some of these are necessarily accurate and I will do my best. Next up. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. Luz Gonzalez. So as you can see, I got I got all the wording done across. So the top the top row is done. I got that. I think I had gotten part of the first satin stitch part done when I showed you last week. So I finished that, got this little motif. So this is this here. So basically most of the first page is done. The first page is like this here. I didn't start on this. I'll do that all together. So I have all this done and I'm starting on, and I got the words all done, and I'm starting on this satin stitch, stitch piece here. really wish I could get don't like the light at all so a couple comments we don't know how old Luz was when she did this many of you many of you very helpful people let me know Loizo is um, she did it but this should be an eye there's no, several of you did some research to see if that was like an old um, way to spell Ezo. No, nobody could find any really instance of it. I think she just wanted to do that cool why. Because why not, right? It's interesting, the spacing on this is very interesting. I have a feeling she might have done the top last that she had done maybe the satin stitch parts and some of the other parts and had to make her name fit the whole way across because you can see like the O and the N are very close together but look at the big space in between those letters the N and the Z and again over here the A and the L are close but there's more space in here 
There's a lot of space between the L, U, Z here, but then the space between the Z and the G is rather close. But anyway, the other comment I'll make about the pattern is I don't think the satin stitch, the way she did the satin stitch layout, I guess, is real clear. She has a, dis a written description of how to do the satin stitches and the placement of the stitches and how many to go across. But when you look at the actual graph, it's not very accurate. And you s kind of go into it knowing that, okay, even though this looks like this is only over three threads, it's actually over four threads. And, you know, like in this section, all of them are over four threads except some of the edge stitches. So there's some places there that um, I could see people being a little confused. But totally worth any, any confusion, any questions, any of that. It's just lovely. Okay, Hoity Toity got some attention a couple of days here and there. Got more work done on the birds. <sighs> Such a gorgeous piece. And you know, a lot of people do um, do it one page at a time, do a big piece like this one page at a time. I've, I've concatenated all of the pages together in Knit Companion, so I'm just kind of all over the place. <laughs> but that's okay. My goal, I think, once, because I'm working on, this is the dark blue, this is called Midnight Hour, it's by Victorian Motto. Um, I think once I get, there's a lot of dark blue in the house, which is right down here, but I think I might try and work across the top and at least get the top banner in place so I know how far across the fabric I'm going. So pretty. Hoity toity. Long dog samplers. I gave some attention to about an hour, not every day, every few days, I guess, to Home for Christmas. This is my small one that I'm working on in amongst all the big ones. That's where I am on that. I have a good chunk of the house done. Hopefully as I work an hour here and there, I will get the house done this week. No, I haven't touched my sewing machine. Yes, I will get this finished into a pillow like it's supposed to, although it is a big pillow. Um, but no, I haven't haven't gotten that far. Haven't gotten the upstairs settled yet. We're getting there. And last but not least, Leeds House Sampler. And I know I inspired several of you to dive into this one. It's so gorgeous. So it didn't get a whole lot more done. Actually, I don't think I got any done after the Stitch With Me video. Now that I look at it, I was working on the letters in the Stitch With Me, the P and the D and the X. So yeah, I didn't get any more done on that. We'll see what this week brings. Tiny Decision app is going to be used, definitely. Um, let's see. Of course, no finishes, no haul, which is yay, Jan, right? Good for me. Let me check, 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 check. Okay, we, it's time to announce our winners of our anniversary and 3,000 subscriber giveaway. So, it's a little reminder. This is the Ada charts my three favorite flowers so far in Hawaii and the linen chart the chart the linen and the threads 
By the way, for those of you that are interested, this designer, Francis Johnson, does have a website. It's FrancisLJohnson.com. I will link it below. Um, that if you want this, she, she does have it available on her website. So, the winners are, I did random number generator. There were 111 of you that wanted the um, Siapo chart and, and kit. And the winner of that is Susie Bree. Susie, congratulations. Please, um, I, I will be commenting on your comment. I haven't yet. I'll give you my email address. If you could send me your, your address, I will get this out in the mail to you. And the Ada, the three Ada kits of the three flowers. We had 68 people interested in those. Yellow Rose won those. So Yellow Rose, please get in touch with me. Again, I'll be putting a comment on your comment with my email address. Let me know your address and I will get these in the mail. You guys also will be getting, I haven't taken the stickers off of this, so let's see if I can ignore that white thing on the back. I also got you some little wooden laser cut coasters. So one of these will be going in each of the packages. Aren't those pretty? Oh, I just noticed this has Hawaii laser cut out of it here, the islands. Mm. I love it here. So, congratulations to the winners. All right, let's see. I think that's about it. I don't think this was too long today. I come to my part of the video where I talk about joy. And I, again, had several of you comment about how much you appreciate that little reminder, whether it's finding the time to make time in your life to do the things that find you joy. That was kind of a convoluted way to say that. Um, find the things you're thankful for that bring you joy, any of that. I wanted to tell you you know, I was, if, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that those last few months in Maryland were kind of rough. Stress-filled, um, bad weather. I just was not happy. I was tired. Um, I was just not very joyful, which is saying something for me because I am very much of an optimist. I'm very much of a person that just, I don't have a hard time finding joy in life. But I, those, those months were rough. We were driving back from the North Shore the other day. On Saturday we went up, Sunday, Sunday we went up. Now granted, it's hard not to be joyful when you're driving around on this island seeing the beauty. Drove up through the Dole, past the Dole, um, pineapple fields, past the coffee plantations, which I didn't even know what a coffee plant looked like. We were seeing these, some of the fields were chopped back, so it was just like not stumps, but um, trunks, little trunks, not big, little, but um, no green on them. And some of them were full blown bushes and we didn't know what they were. But luckily, one of the fields said Waipalu Coffee Farm. I'd never seen a coffee bush before, so that was really cool. But anyways, we were driving back. And I felt such a feeling of this peace and joy. I was looking out at the mountains along the western coast of Oahu, and I thought, you know, granted, we're here, we're getting settled, what's not to love, right? But there was just this inner core of just peace that I haven't felt for a very long time. Perfect timing from the dishwasher. It's a very happy little dishwasher too. I don't know whether you can hear it. It's an LG and you know the LG appliances play the little tune when they're done. I love it. But anyways, I was feeling such, an, such joy and I thought, is this just because all of the stress is gone? Or is it really just because I'm out in the sunshine? Is it really just the effect of grayness versus sunshine? You know, the whole, um, what is it? 
something affective disorder. What does the S stand for? Seasonal affective disorder. Is it really just that? Is it that the stress is gone? I don't know. But I can tell you I'm a totally different person now. I don't know whether that comes through in my videos. If I could package up this joy and this peace that I'm feeling and send it to you, I totally would. I've heard from several of you of the stresses that you're going through, of family problems, of losses, and my heart feels for you, and I just really wish I could package this up and send it to you. Please know that you're in my thoughts. Please know that I am sending you all the love and joy and warmth and some sunshine that I can. And for those of you that are going to StitchCon, you had better come and give me a great big old hug. I am a hugger. I have no problem with hugs. So on that note, Friday I'll be doing a stitch with me. At some point in here I'll do those other little videos with blending filaments and um, fabric size. But until then, find your joy. It is out there. It is waiting for you. Even if it's just putting a few stitches in fabric, playing a musical instrument that you haven't taken the time to pick up in a few weeks, a few months, sitting outside if you can and listening to the birds sing. Whatever it is that brings you joy, I hope you find it this week. Until next time, I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.